Okay, so um, I'm very excited to be here to talk about the uh, learning on demand and, and when and how it's coming to Moodle Workplace. This is huge for us, and I'm very excited to be here and see a lot of familiar faces. So uh, let's get started. So about me first, uh, you probably don't see me there, but I'm this guy, just sitting beside Martin, which means that for the next year I will be in a lot of marketing material, so you'll see my face. So I managed to uh, sit beside him. But uh, another, a couple of things about me. Okay, I think I need a mic. Okay, so I'm a long-time Moodler, I think since 2008. Uh, uh, since 2008, sorry, that I was uh, working with Moodle. Uh, I'm a product person and, and a product manager at heart. Uh, even before it was a thing for me, I didn't know that that was a title, but I was a product person. Um, I'm a problem solver, I'm, I'm optimistic, probably. So you can see that, um, oh, okay. It's not a glass of whiskey, by the way, but I couldn't find a glass of water, so I'm one of these persons that sees the, um, glass full, uh, half full, and not half empty. I'm a proud dad. I'm getting married this Saturday, and I love this emoji for no reason, and I, I use it everywhere. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about something completely different, the learning catalog. So what is the learning catalog? So what is a catalog? So you um, probably have seen catalogs all around. So when you're accessing Udemy, edX, Coursera, uh, you actually using a learning catalog, and something that um, will basically let you to choose the learning you do want to take, find things that are interesting to you, and basically decide what you want to learn. So this is what we want to have in Moodle Workplace. It will take us a while to get there, but uh, we're working on that. So for us, a learning catalog will mean that we will be unlocking the learning on demand way of learning because right now in workplace um, we focus on the prescribed learning use case so basically someone else um, deciding uh, what you need to learn but because that's a huge uh, use case in workplace we have certifications we have compliance training and things like that and of course it's not that Workplace is not really for the learning on demand use case. There's a lot of products out there that do this. There are catalogs that they can be integrated with Workplace. Our partners use them all the time. But there wasn't any built-in solution for this. And this is something essential, so that's why we are adding it to Workplace. And it was, in fact, one of the top priorities, the top most priority when we ask partners what is the feature they wanted to have in Workplace. So. Let's go back to the start uh, a little bit, so let's not go so fast, because if not, I'll take 10 minutes only for my presentation. So let's go back to the problems that we want to solve with this, what users need. So for learners, they want basically to choose their learning and access it anywhere, anytime, find the best learning for the better price and discover new courses that are available to them. This is basically what learners want to do when they are looking for a catalog. Managers, which is a user persona for us, is very important. They want their teammates to learn and improve by allowing them to choose their own learning. This is key. And also by recommending learning to the teammates. It's not the same thing recommending something to someone than um, basically assigning them to the learning. Also developers, which are very important for us because linking with, with Mani said yesterday, uh, Moodle Workplace, as Moodle is both a product, a platform, and a solution. So as a platform, for us it's very important that um, developers have a built-in catalog um, and e-commerce functionality embedded into Moodle that they can customize and extend. So there are a lot of keywords here. It has to be embedded into Moodle, it has to be a built-in solution, and obviously it must have e-commerce functionality, and they can, so they can customize it and extend it. And organizations, they want to help improve their employees' skill set, increase the work power, and therefore their benefits, but also, and most importantly, promote and monetize their learning. These, all these things uh, are this that our different uses one from the catalog. So 
But you will be wondering why now, so, or why we waited for so long to introduce the catalog. So, the first thing is that we didn't wait for so long. We have been working on this for a long time, but before we could build a catalog within Workplace, we needed to have some foundation, some things embedded into the platform that they didn't exist before 4.0. So we took the opportunity with 4.0 to start designing the UI and the user workflow, having the catalog in mind. So the introduction of the My Courses pages was essential for us uh, because, as you know, apart from courses, we have also other learning entities, programs and certifications. So this was a place where we could uh, show the users all the learning that was assigned to them. In fact, this is like their personal learning catalog. So this was the first step towards that. With this, we introduced the course cover page, which is basically the details page on any catalog. This is a page that you will see if you don't have access to the course, but you can see what is this course about, the dates and all the relevant information. You can imagine that if you had a buy button in there, you'll have half of the functionality of the catalog. So we introduced the course cover page, and we also had uh, the same for programs with the program page. So when we introduced all these elements, we had the catalog in mind. So that's why. So what are the goals we want to achieve with the catalog? This is very related, of course, to the uh, pain points. So with the catalog, we want to empower learners to take control of their own learning journey. This is basically learning on demand. We want to enable organizations to curate, promote, and monetize their learning natively in Moodle Workplace. And we want to make it easy for developers and partners to add custom e-commerce features to Moodle Workplace using this flexible and scalable built-in catalog solution. So they're very ambitious goals, and the catalog alone could be like a different product, so because it's very big. So, how we approach the design to, uh, what was our approach to the design with this? Because we, did, we had to make sure that we designed this in a way that uh, we could test it as soon as possible and learn from it because it's massive. So, we were working on this for, I think, one year maybe. So, everything started with the benchmarking. So, we were looking at other, how other solutions what all this, what problems all the solutions were solving, how uh, they uh, solved them, and uh, what we could do to uh, add similar functionality. And with this, we continue the research to really dig into uh, this aspect and everything to prepare like a very big workshop with our partners. That took, took us like one month to prepare this. We got all PAG partners in, in a room, in a virtual room, and start discussing all the things that we could add to the catalog, but what were the priorities. And the mirror world is so massive that I couldn't include it even in 10 slides. But with this, we didn't want to know, we didn't want to have like a very detailed roadmap that it will probably be outdated six months after. What we really wanted to know it is what was essential for them so we can build the very first version of the catalog and on top of it, we could evolve it and add the rest of the feature. So we did the user story mapping with them. I'll get into this in a sec. And we sliced the two first releases that we wanted to do to not to be very ambitious. And then we started with the prototype loop, which means that we start the creating prototypes from very high level ones to just to test some assumptions, test them with real users, refine the prototypes and do this again. I think we did like three or four loops with this until we got to a prototype but we really uh, thought it was great and it, was, it had exactly what we wanted to have. And then we started with the development. So what's the release plan? What will be in the catalog? So first thing, that we do is that we um, took the essential functionality and we split it into two releases. So in this case, uh, with other features, so we, we always had this approach, uh, this incremental approach to add features in Workplace. But with other features, we, um, 
we used to create like very big MVPs, which means that we could be working on something for six months, something obviously not so big like this, uh, only to realize that we put that in the hands of the partners or we, the real users and start using them. We found things that maybe we could have done differently, but we didn't know because that was the first time our users used that. So with the catalog, we thought that we should do something different. So we should have a shorter feedback loop. So the MVP for us was basically something that could add value to some users, only to some users, but that we could test. So if we could get something for the next major release, put it in the hands of the user, validate it, our hypothesis, do user testing with the real product, we could learn from it and decide with partners what is the feature that we wanted to add next. So for the first, this is like the first release, and then in the second release we just decided to add the sensor to function ID. So in release one, we implemented a course catalog, and release two could be the MVP for the learning catalog. I'll go with that in a sec. So this is what we uh, were planning to do, and this is what we're really doing. So the course catalog in the first release of Moodle, uh, in, this, in its first release, which is Moodle WordPress 4.4, it will basically have the same functionality of the slash courses catalog in Moodle. It will effectively replace it in WordPress. So if you enable it, uh, you will get to our catalog instead to the Moodle LMS standard catalog. So, but it will have the same functionality. It will have courses that can be made public through the catalog. Users will be able to find learning in there, to purchase courses the same way they would do in Moodle, and they set the catalog as a site home. So basically we cover the same functionality, obviously adding some bits and, and as you can imagine, changing everything underneath and, uh, and the UI, but the functionality will remain the same. This way, we can assume that for the user, for our users that are using only courses, that they really need um, course catalog functionality, they can start testing this and help us to uh, validate our hypothesis. What we're going to do is just developing what is essential and relying on Moodle in these first releases for everything that Moodle already does. So we're not going to reinvent the wheel with, um, with the way Moodle has to, for users to buy courses. So we will support enrollment plugins that will be uh, um, the, the payment gateways natively and everything to ensure that users can buy courses with our catalog. In the next release, in the following release, what we'll be doing is adding our learning entities to this mix. So once we have the foundation, we'll add programs and certifications with exactly the same capability, which means that we need to um, implement a way of users to self-register to programs and certifications, which is also a big feature. And once we have that, we can call it a learning catalog because then it can add value to all of our users who want to use a catalog. And that will be the foundation stone. And from there, we will learn, uh, we will test things, and we will decide with our partners what's the next step in the journey. So let's have a sneak peek into the learning catalog. So. This is the catalog learning page, uh, landing page, sorry. So this is basically a homepage for the users in the catalog. This is the first page that uh, they'll see. Um, and this is where all the advanced functionality in the catalog will hook in. Because if um, there's some plan is to recommend courses to the users based on different criteria, they will add blocks to this page. If there's a rating feature for courses, it will also uh, hook into here. Maybe you'll see the most um, top rated courses, um, courses that your two mates are taking that might be interesting for you. All this feature might hook in in this page. Obviously, this page can make public. This can be public. And then uh, users can either browse their categories which is a challenge in Moodle because it's unlike other uh, catalog solutions, we have to be generic, so we need to support very different use cases with just V categories or hundreds of them. And users can find their learning by 
uh, browsing the categories with the filters. You will notice that this is a different view. We have a uh, car view in, in the landing page. Here we have more like a um, tile layout. And users can search, find things in the catalog, and, and refine the search. It might look simple and vanilla, and, but that was intentional because for us, uh, the learning catalog and everything work is, is like a white canvas that then our partners and developers in general take to create customized solutions for the customer. So it has to be um, white, clean, it has to be something that they can customize. But you notice the UI and the, inter the navigation is, uh, is very slick. And, and, it's, uh, and we think that it's very uh, usable because our testing is what it demonstrates. So this is the learning catalog. As I say, it might look simple, but there's a lot of work under the, the scenes because we had to basically create new functionality to replace the existing Moodle LMS functionality and connect, it, connect the dots and bring all the features uh, in here so we can have the full learning journey just by adding the essential features. So the catalog will, uh, as I said, will be available, the course catalog will be available in 4.4. This is what we're working towards. Uh, development is going very well. In fact, there are some things that are already added to the product, but these are not shown in the UI. So you'll be able to uh, test it soon. So. This is about the catalog, but it's not the only thing I wanted to uh, talk about. So uh, we're releasing Moodle Workplace 4.3 one month after Moodle LMS, because after the Moodle LMS major release, we do our QA and upgrade, and then we're ready to release. So in Moodle Workplace 4.3, we have two important features. That we have many features that are added, but I want to highlight uh, two of them. The first one is this. is the name is not perfect, but, uh, but the other name we have for this is Tariff Manager. It was a bit misleading. It's basically that. So it's a manual assign feature, manual assign manager feature. It basically helps organization do better integrated HR systems with Moodle because centralize the reporting lines management to make HR manager life easier and it streamlines a whole team creation because it just adds another way to define reporting lines in workplace that is at the center and is simpler for the user and also is what all the systems use when defining reporting lines. This is basically the ability to define one person being the manager of another person. This is the direct management relationship, no departments and positions involved. So a part of this or thanks to this uh, feature, we uh, took the opportunity to refactor organization structure, the way that uh, reporting lines, um, the UI to define reporting lines works and Buddha. Because as it, as it is today, it's maybe too close to the structure in the database and it's not so functional. So in the manual assignment manager, the new feature what we're doing is, is that we'll have a people tab where, manager, where HR managers can see everybody, all the employees in their tenant with all their jobs. And from there, they can just get to the page, to a page where they, where they can see all the related information for uh, individuals, such as the jobs that have assigned so they can know all the positions they have. Um, because of those positions, there are some people reporting to these persons or they report to other persons. So they will see in the same place what are the jobs this person have, who this person reports to, and everybody reporting to this person from the same place. And they will be able to add new jobs, uh, add, man add managers manually, or add people managing them. So basically creating ad hoc teams from here and drill down. It's, it's a more intuitive way of browsing the organization structure. And this is something that also um, helps organization with a um, massive number of users or with a very complex organization structure, and we have quite a lot of them. But at the same time, one of the main uh, benefits of this is that it will simplify integrations with other systems, because this way is simpler to integrate with systems that already use this approach. So the other 
functionality I wanted to talk about is the public custom pages. So um, with this feature, we can create public landing pages natively in Moodle WordPress and expose this content and functionality to external users. For those of you who don't know what a public, uh, custom pages are, uh, are basically um, functionality in Moodle WordPress that allows creating pages like dashboards are in blocks, like you would add them in the dashboard and then make these pages available to a specific audiences in WordPress. So this is the an about us space, this is how it would look like. And you make them accessible to specific users by defining audiences. So these audiences could be this page is only available to people in the sales department or as we introduce now, this page is available to guests and non-authenticated users, which means that it's effectively a public page. And you can do it uh, this uh, from WordPress natively. So uh, I want to spend a bit of time talking about the roadmap and the new features that we'll deliver in the future. And I'll take this opportunity to make an announcement. So uh, to announce something, we're working on the accessibility accreditation, the level AA accessibility accreditation. This is the first time we get it and for Moodle WordPress. There were some reasons why we couldn't do it before, but we're doing it now at the same time as Moodle LMS, right after. Which means that hopefully in the next major release, we can, or before the next major release, we can just say that Moodle WordPress is uh, accessible uh, with the AA level, which is a huge milestone. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I know that people are expecting, are, are looking forward to this, so yeah, it's not that exciting for all of us, but I think it's a great selling point of WordPress and something that we really have to do to, uh, to take all kind of uses and diversities into account. So I think this is key. So from all these features that we have in the, in the roadmap, there are, okay, or not? Oh, okay, you cannot see, see them, sorry. It's not, the context is not very well, so very good. So in this feature, in no column, you'll notice that, so you see that the public custom pages is already completed, will be delivered in 4.3, manual and manuals is about to be finished, so it will be also in 4.3, the accessibility audit is in progress, and the course catalog, of course, will be available in the next release. And for the other four features, we have already started, uh, exploring them. The um, most relevant and probably the most important is from the ones that, that we have started working on is charging report builder. So we started exploring this feature and both so we can start with the design during the next increment. I don't think we can deliver something for 4.4 but we'll see because we still have to define the scope so we might be able to squeeze something into the release but that's also another bit big feature that is common in WordPress. So, okay, that's great because I just got to the end, so uh, thank you so much, and if you have any questions, I think we have five minutes. Hello, um, one question you mentioned in the course catalog that um, organization needs um, are there. And sometimes organizations want to buy entire catalogs of other uh, companies, like LinkedIn, Skillsoft, and so on. Would that be a possibility to integrate one's catalog with another? That's a very good question, by the way. Uh, look, with the catalog, um, we don't want to, we will probably not add all the e-commerce features and all the features that these specific solutions have because it wouldn't make sense to do it built in Moodle because there are specialized solutions that can do that and they do it very well. So what we're doing is, is the basic functionality product. This is something we need to explore with the PEG. We need to decide together how far we can get on this. But of course there will be a room for all of these solutions to uh, either to use them instead of the catalog, if the client, if the user really needs this specific functionality, or also to be integrated with our learning catalog to augment our functionality. So we see an ecosystem where all these products will continue 
adding value to workplace. It's not that we want to replace them at all. We just want to provide a built-in solution so users can have some capability within workplace. It's great to see the um, in, you know, the courses and programs and certifications integrated into catalog. Are there any plans to go beyond that, for example, just resources or a video or a page or you know, so I'm kind of getting at kind of basic LXP type functionality? As I said, that's a very good question indeed. Uh, I see that they could be added to the catalog, but these two early to say anything about that because we need to decide with partners what to do. And probably we will add all the features first that other than this because this is like a going um, level further which complicates everything that we add. But yeah, I see it as an interesting feature so we'll see. I cannot say anything about that, sorry. Hello. Um, one of our biggest struggles is that whether we like it or not, our clients like to prioritize style over functionality. <laughs> and um, I'm just, uh, my question is in terms of how easy, how easy is it going to be to customize those cards on the catalog on the dashboard? Probably was to, I don't know, question, yeah, that's great. I was expecting all these questions. So. It was too small in the screen set, but I don't know if you noticed that in our user story map, we had one user persona that was developer. So we took that into account, and in the development, we're doing everything so you guys can customize it, cards, templates, and everything. So that's the intention. We took that very into account. And that's why it's also we made it very vanilla, so you could customize it this way. 